We are going to begin today on our moonlit painting in the background with a large square headed brush by Artists Loft and a mixture of paint including primary blue, titanium white, and black, all of which by Liquitex Basics. All of the tools will be listed in the description box. With that being said, I'm using this large square headed brush because it can cover a very large surface area and hold a good amount of paint. This is important when you want to render a large sky with acrylics because the paints do dry quickly, so you need to get a lot of paint on there and blend it smoothly in a rather fast amount of time. So once I have that applied and fairly smooth, I'm going to go down to the stream or river here at the bottom of the painting. I'm going to apply the pigment here predominantly in horizontal strokes, and as you can see, as the stream descends into the background, it gets smaller and smaller, it tapers inwards, and that's because that is how perception uh, works. As things get closer to us, they seem larger and larger, as they get farther away, they seem smaller and smaller. So it's important to have your stream kind of taper in in that manner. I also have it jetting to the right and left just to add some extra interest and intricacy. Then I'm taking some additional titanium white and primary blue, adding it to the top center of our sky where our moon is eventually going to be. It left a very subtle effect, but subtlety in painting can really do a lot and add up. So with that being said, I'm now taking a medium sized square headed brush and beginning to implement some mountains in the background. Now these don't have a lot of detail and they don't have a lot of color because I don't want them distracting from anything in our foreground. Generally you want to simplify your background so that your foreground can really stand out so that it doesn't steal the eye or attention. And with that in mind, I applied it that way. None of the mountains are the exact same size or shape. It's important to ensure that they are inconsistent in a way because nature is always rendering things in different ways. It's not man-made. It's not like every building is going to look the same. So with that being said, I'm now creating a little tree line with a darker version of that same color. I'm using a square headed brush and doing a tapping effect to ensure that I get this litany of different little implications of trees in the background. And then I'm taking my large square headed brush, mixing the colors from said trees and the previously applied mountains, and just blocking in that area. I'm going to apply a tree in the foreground over that area, so I'm not really worried about it. I'm just creating a fairly consistent background color. Then I'm taking these colors that I'm using in the trees and mountains and just blocking in where I might want to put a tree in later. You don't have to do this, I just thought I'd show you that I was doing it, and I'm using those same colors to ensure that the painting remains very cohesive. Then, again, on the note of cohesive, I'm taking that a fairly similar color to what I was using before and adding a little bit of green in it for the grass and the field area here. It's very dark, so you want it to be desaturated, but really the mixture of paint here is a good amount of black, a tiny bit of white to desaturate it, then a mixture of primary blue and primary yellow which make a green. The entire painting here I believe is actually completed in only five colors, which is great because it ensures that your painting remains cohesive in color and you don't have to break the bank buying so many colors. You can do a lot with a little. And that's something I really try to show you in these painting tutorials. So here I'm just continuing to map in all of that green. And as you can see, because the acrylic paint is very wet, it's very reflective. And that makes it difficult to work with. Sometimes you can be doing everything right and it might not look right because it is still wet. So I'm going to let this dry and show you what it looks like then so that we have a better understanding. So that's going to happen in three two, one, bam. Okay, I, I wasn't sure if it was going to happen, but um, I'm glad that worked. As you can see, we have a much better understanding of the colors that we're using, and I just wanted to extend my water out a little bit. Thankfully, acrylic paint dries very quickly, and now I'm just taking that same blue that I was using for the water and the sky and applying that down 
into this middle area. And I'm just expanding this to ensure that when I paint in my reflections, I have a good amount of room to do so. So it's all looking kind of basic right now. And that is a-okay. Generally paintings don't really work until the end. It's that final 10% that really makes them look special. So just bear with me here. But right now I'm creating a separation in the water and the land with a small square headed brush and a mixture of primary blue and titanium white. Then I'm taking a very similar white and I'm applying it into the top of the sky for my moon. Then in horizontal strokes I'm applying that reflection from said moon into the water. What's really important here is that you apply the paint fairly softly. And that's because if you apply it very hard, it's going to blend in, you're going to push the paint about and you're not going to get a very natural pigment. You want to be soft with your application so that you get that pure paint pigment in the middle. Then as you get towards the edges, you can kind of blend it out to the right and to the left. That way, that middle color, it's very dense, it's very bright, it's not transparent, and then as you get to the edges, it feathers out and it becomes a little bit darker, it blends in with the blue more, and it just looks so much more natural in the process. So just remember to be very soft with the middle, almost don't go back and touch the middle, but blend both the left and the right sides of the water out. Then I'm going to take another very small square headed brush and begin to map in a couple of trees in the foreground. Now these trees are very close to us and so they are going to appear much larger because again that is how perspective works, right? As things get larger or as things get closer in the foreground they look much larger. We have a tree line in the background but it looks incredibly small because it is so far away. I'm trying to ensure that all of these trees are fairly different and I have a good amount of water on my brush to ensure that they go on very softly, very cleanly. It's not breaking apart. Then I'm taking a very old square headed brush, the bristles kind of leaf off in varying directions to create inconsistency and with a tapping motion I'm applying a litany of leaves. Now these are implied and it's just a very quick way of getting on a lot of detail. And it's ensuring that each patch of like cluster of leaves looks very different from the one next to it. I'm slightly rotating my brush as I'm moving it in the air to the next area to ensure that there is this different intricacy and it's just a, a very quick efficient way of rendering just a plethora of foliage in your painting. You can also use a lot of additional paint there because it's in the foreground and you can use some you can get some extra texture there. It's great for adding additional detail and depth in your painting. Then I'm making the top right corner a little bit darker just to create a little bit of a vignette and draw the eye into the middle of the painting where you want the viewer's eye. Again, great for depth, great for all of that. From there, I'm going to take a very small liner brush and or round-headed brush and using some titanium white, some primary yellow, and some primary red, I'm going to apply a good number of dots, squares, rectangles, all of the above, and create this really nice and warm city in the background, this beautiful inviting light. The idea that you can kind of canoe down this river here and end up there. Painting is very much about storytelling and you can kind of lead the viewer through the painting. It, it's, such a, it's such a beautiful thing, and it will really help invoke emotion. So that's just what we're doing here. We're creating little paths of light, and then I'm also creating reflections from it using those same colors. I'm just applying it at the top of my water, then dragging down as we get down below. I'm kind of letting it blend in and be feathered, and that way it's just a very natural look. It's a, it's a very pragmatic way of doing things. So from there, we go back to a very cathartic way of applying paint, and that is just with an old square-headed brush, again doing more of a tapping motion in the trees. This is with a brighter green, and I'm only applying this to the edges of the trees that are going to be adopting light. This is going to make the trees look more three-dimensional, uh, less cartoon-like, and it's going to ensure that we have more depth in our painting. 
If you want to render depth with something, again, you have a dark area, you have a medium color, you have a light color, and you have all of these ranges in between. But you essentially want a dark side and a light side, and preferably a transitionary area as well. So then I'm also going to take that same color and apply some foliage in the foreground as well and on where we have our field and our grass. But I'm not doing it on the edges, I'm only doing it yet again where the light is hitting it, where the moon can touch it, where the light from the trees can reflect off onto it, where the light from the um, water can reflect off onto it. Remember that light is very reflective, color is very reflective. So if it's a very blue sky, our mountains are going to have blue in them, our trees probably going to have blue in them. It's just, it's about creating something very cohesive, something that fits together. So here I'm just adding some final little details to our painting in that same tapping motion. And really, there we have it. There is our final 10 minute painting. This one was just such a joy to create. I truly hope you've enjoyed. If you're new to acrylic painting and you'd like to learn more, there's a link in the description to my ebook, Acrylic Painting for Beginners. And of course, I post every Saturday. I hope to see you next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching, and above all, stay creative.